The Shooting Range. In this episode, Pages of History, the arduous path of British cruiser tanks, tactics and strategy, the typical urban duels, and metal beasts, the top South African elephant. The Iqwa Strike update is almost there on the main servers. It will bring along some new tech for everyone, but we can't wait to tell you all about it. So please welcome the crown jewel of the South African ground vehicles, the Oliphant Mark II main battle tank. This tank is based on the British Centurion, but thanks to a thorough modernization, its mid-20th century specs have been upgraded to catch up with its modern counterparts. The two-plane stabilized 105mm gun has elevation angles between minus 10 and plus 18 degrees. The machine, of course, has a coaxial machine gun, thermals, and smoke launchers. The layout is pretty classic, with the driver in the front, three more crew members in the turret, and the rear housing the engine compartment. The ammo stowage is spread out throughout the combat compartment. The main source of the Oliphant's firepower is a top-ranking 105mm APFSDS and the DM-63. That's enough to successfully hit any target at any distance. <laughs> but of course, you have to spot your enemy before you destroy them. That's where your high-resolution thermals come in handy. It's available to both the gunner and the commander at any time. Thanks to a 1000 horsepower diesel engine, this tank can accelerate up to 40-50 km per hour even on soft ground. Not a record by any means, but still a decent result, especially for such a massive machine. Add to that a good reverse speed and smokes, and you get a great combo for a retreat before it gets too hot. Modern electronics, a powerful engine, and cutting-edge rounds are what made the good old Centurion so much better. The only weakness that remained unfixed is armor. Indeed, it has been strengthened, but even a set of additional armor doesn't make it invincible. Moreover, the new turret armor made the already bulky tank simply enormous. Good luck trying to hide this monster in the landscape. Your only hope is for an inexperienced enemy to shoot at the turret's front edge. This way, the round will miss the combat compartment. If you're playing in an urban environment, we recommend you start with one of the central directions. Keep in the second line and destroy enemies one by one. With weak armor, the chance of losing the vehicle after a single hit is high. So, do your best at protecting the tank's hull and ammo storage from being exploded. Now, open hilly maps are where Oliphant performs the best. With binoculars and thermals, you'll spot the enemy faster, while elevation angles will help you hide this elephant behind a hill and only expose the turret for a shot or two. Before World War II, the British were developing both infantry and cruiser tanks simultaneously, and while the former were getting better, the latter had been encountering a number of issues. Even autocannons could penetrate the 14mm armour of the A13 Mark I, while the Liberty's engines turned out to be highly unreliable. Some tanks simply failed to reach the battlefields, or had to be left as a trophy for the Germans during the retreat. The engineers managed to improve the armour on the next modification, but there was no alternative for the fault-ridden engine. The Matildas and the Valentines received improved bus diesel engines, but again, that was the best of the worst, since the cruiser tanks were supposed to be quick. In all fairness, the Brits had foreseen such problems as early as in 1939. The Mark V Covenanter they made back then was rushed and expectedly turned out less than stellar, or, to be more specific, completely unsuitable for a big war. 
So the Nuffield company soon proposed an alternative project for the same existing turret. The new tank, the Mark VI Crusader, had a new chassis with five road wheels per side, and the same old faulty unreliable Liberty engine that had no replacement. The layout allowed for a machine gun turret to be installed next to the driver. It was there, thanks to the Soviets' demonstration of the three-turret T-28 tank a few years prior. Such an unusual design impressed the British engineers, so naturally, they decided to implement some of the solutions in their future projects. Still, they were in a rush. The Mark VI entered production with no thorough testing. The production contracts had been signed before a single prototype was running. The result was sort of expected. The Crusader's specs looked decent enough, but reliability issues came up soon enough. Some of them had to be resolved in production, while others in actual service. At least, most of them were fixable, unlike its predecessor's issues. In May 1941, the Crusaders made it to Egypt. The timing was perfect, since the Germans, headed by Erwin Rommel, began their advance soon after. Having any tank was better than none, but soldiers never bore any love for them anyway. The machine gun turret was too cramped, and the gunner became trapped under a certain angle of the main turret, unable to even escape the machine. The engine problems were still there. Tankers considered a total failure-free runtime of 36 hours a miracle. The Crusaders took a few more years to be polished, and in those years, the Germans had improved their tanks' armor and firepower so much that the British had to catch up once again. Fortunately, history proved that it didn't take long for them to do so. Wasn't it the British who invented the idea of a main battle tank? A concept that would be leading the world of tank engineering for decades ahead? <laughs> yeah, but that's another story for another time. Each tank battle is indeed unique, but it doesn't take much time to realize that all of them have a certain number of simple repeating patterns. If you know how to do your best in each of these situations, you can get a tactical win. A series of tactical wins gives strategic advantage for your team and ultimately a victory in battle. Today, we'll discuss tanking duels where two enemies are divided by an obstacle. For instance, a building's corner. The situation might seem a stalemate. If you peek out first, you'll get into the sights of your enemy and around to the face. Still, environmental awareness is key in this situation. If your team has already captured some areas and the enemy's losing their score, it's a great opportunity to stall the enemy and make them lose their time. First of all, never expose your tracks, especially if your tank hugs a wall or some other obstacle. You can become completely immobilized if your enemy damages it, and after that, they can take their time to pick the juiciest vulnerability. Second, never peek your gun around the corner. One good shot, and you're helpless. Now, what can and should you do? Keep some distance between your tank and the wall for maneuvering. Try to provoke your enemy for a shot, exposing your side with an obtuse angle. This way, you increase the chance of ricochet. Remember, though, that this trick doesn't work against APFSDS and a large caliber HE round. In addition, some tanks, like the IS and the T-34, have good armor in the rear, too so you might want to expose your back to the enemy. The round will hit the engine compartment, which will protect the crew. Also, pay attention to the turret shape on your tank. For instance, the Centurion Mark I's wide front and noticeable cheeks is perfectly visible around the corner, which means this Brit will get slapped on those cheeks way before his gun can fire around at the enemy. The Panther F 
has a similar situation. This tank's vulnerability is the rangefinder blobs found on the sides of the turret. Another detail to consider is the commander's cupola placement. You have a higher chance of seeing the hangar screen early if the enemy sees it before you can shoot at them. If your cupola might expose you, try to find another position, like going around the building. Now, a stalemate is possible if no areas have been captured, both players are close to the corner, and none have occupied a good position yet. In this position, you need to wait for your enemy to make a mistake. Sooner or later, they'll miss, expose a vulnerability, or move their turret aside. Finally, the worst situation is when your enemy is getting a score win soon and you need to break through their defense. Risk is your only option here. Try to immobilize the enemy first. To do that, you can shoot a track or road wheel out, for example, a back one. Having done that, leave your cover angling away from the corner and aim for the vulnerable areas. Commander's cup holders, turret edges or turret rings, depending on your foe. Once you damage their turret drive, a gunner or some other crucial part of preventing them from shooting, you can get bolder and simply go flank them from the side. Finally, we'd like to discuss a few more typical scenarios for urban maps. For instance, two enemies might find each other across a thin wall, like those on Berlin or Rhine maps. In this case, you shouldn't increase the distance to the obstacle. The reason is, the rubbish commonly found behind those walls can catch your rounds. The further you go from the ruin, the higher the chance of wasting a round on the clutter. By the way, third-person view is usually more convenient in this case, since it makes aim correction simpler. Finally, Let's consider a situation with a pile of rubbish next to the wall. As a rule of thumb, it's a great place to hide the lower part of your tank, which gives an advantage to those with thicker turret armor. You can tease your enemy by rolling backwards and forwards. And when they succumb, they'll give you a great chance to destroy them. If your reloading rate is faster than your enemies, there's another trick you can pull off. When you're teasing them by exposing a part of your turret, Shoot. Shoot anywhere, even randomly ahead. Many players will be caught unawares and instinctively shoot back. With a faster reload, your next shot will be their last. Well, friends, good luck in your urban skirmishes in War Thunder. Meanwhile, it's time for us to answer some of your questions. The first question was sent in by a player called Matej Jamnik. How to play the T-55A? Hi there. The T-55 belongs to the second line on the battlefield. Its armor won't protect you from a heat or subcaliber round, so take it slow. On the plus side, this Soviet tank can boast a wide choice of its own rounds. For frontal attacks, go for the APFSDS since they're great against thick armor. As for those satisfying side attacks, a single APCBC round would be just right to send them to the hangar. Messy Jesse asks, why did the American pilots not like the P-39, but the Russian pilots liked it? Hi there. There are a few factors to consider. First, the P-39 was hard to control prone to getting into a spin too often. The Soviet pilots, however, were used to such difficulties since many of them had some experience flying the I-16 fighter, which was equally disobedient. Imagine their emotions when they got a plane with a higher speed, a better 37mm cannon, <laughs> and even radio. Second, the Americans were used to fighting at higher altitudes, where the P-39 was inferior compared to other fighters since it had no turbocharger. Another question comes from The Clinge. Does the ME-262 have underwing rockets? Hi there! 
Yep, it does. Their caliber is too small against ground targets, though. Still, they can be pretty useful against air targets. Set up your fuse and send a few at the bold enemy who dared a frontal attack. With a little bit of skill, you'll get a few satisfying frags. Landon LTG writes, I've recently made a squadron and I'm trying to research the A4E, but whenever I play a match, I don't get any RP for the squadron vehicle. Is there something I'm doing wrong? Hello there, don't worry, you're doing it right. For every 200 research points earned in regular battles, you get one squadron activity point. Every three days, those points are converted into research points for your vehicle. And the last comment for today was written by Mattia Gabriella. Could you please add a way to lock the turret in position? Would be very useful in combat and in cinematics as well. Hello, Mattia. To avoid moving the turret, you can switch to the driver's view or to machine gun control. Well, that's it for today, guys. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, and the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell. Come on, we've told you this for four years. If you don't want to miss our next videos, don't forget to refill your blinker fluid. Leave a like, because you do. Share your thoughts and comments, because we love them. And I'll see you next week.